In this video, I'll be covering question 5, part D, from the 2023 AP Calculus AB free response no calculator allowed portion of the exam. I cover parts A, B, C, and D all in their own individual videos, so if you want to see my other solutions, please check out my other videos. Okay, so diving into this problem, we've obviously got a big table of values up at the top here that we'll have to work from, I'm sure. And then let's see what D is specifically asking us. So D is saying, is the function M defined in part C, so M of X equaling this equation up here, increasing or decreasing or neither at this specific value X equals 2? When you start seeing terms like increasing and decreasing, this is coming from your first derivative. Whenever you see increasing or decreasing, that's bells and whistles should be going off that we're talking about our first derivative. So from that, what we know is if our first derivative is equal to some positive number, we don't even care what the number is, we just care that it's positive. That tells us that the graph is headed up and increasing. If we've got a first derivative value that is negative, well, again, we don't care what the number is. We just care that it was negative and therefore the graph was going down and decreasing. And then if the first derivative is equal to zero, uh, that doesn't really tell us too much because a graph can go horizontal while still increasing. Uh, that's the graph of X to the third. So odds are what we're looking at on something like this is increasing or decreasing. To find out what we're going to do is this problem is really basically asking us to go find what's the value of m prime of 2 and is that thing positive or negative if it's zero we'll have more to talk about but odds are this thing is going to be positive or negative let's go then to our starting equations we were given m of x is equal to 5x to the third plus the integral from 0 to x of f prime of t dt Step one of this process is just going to be to find the derivative of that. So working through this, this piece here, that's just going to be our straight up power rule. We bring the power down and then subtract one from the power. So 3 times 5 gets us 15x, subtract one from the power gets us x squared. When we go over to the second part of that equation, though, what we see is this integral. And we see an integral with this equation, this x sitting up inside here. This right here, when we come to take the derivative of it, this is your fundamental theorem of calculus part one. Bells and whistles should be going off whenever you see that you need to find the derivative of an integral, and that integral has some equation sitting up inside here. This was remembered that derivatives and antiderivatives, what that rule was telling us is those things cancel each other out. They're inverses. It's like having x squared and then square rooting it. Those things cancel each other out and you're left with just that x. Well, here derivatives and antiderivatives would cancel each other out and what ended up happening from our fundamental theorem of calculus part one was the x just dropped down in there. So the derivative of that piece is just going to equal f prime of x. The x just falls into this f of f prime of t equation. Now that we have our derivative, now we need to go plug in 2 to see if that thing is positive or negative. So m prime of 2 is going to equal 15, plugging in an n for x, everywhere I see an x I'm plugging in 2, plus f prime of 2. So 2 squared is 4, 4 times 15 is going to get us 60, plus f prime of 2 we're going to find from our table. So at 2, our f prime value is negative 8, so we would get minus 8. So cleaning that up, we end up with m prime of 2 is 60 minus 8. That's 52. We didn't really care about the number specifically. We just care that this is positive. So m prime of 2 is positive. And that tells us then that our graph is increasing at that point. So m is the original function increasing at x equals 2 because m prime of 2 is greater than 0. And we're done. So from there, we would have ended up getting out three points on this. We would have gotten out one point from telling them what the actual derivative was. We would have gotten one point for getting out this actual value right here. And then they like to have you wrap it up with some justification. And that would have gotten us our third point. Thanks for watching my video. If you liked it, please click that like button and subscribe.
And also share it with your friends and anyone else you know who might be crying about an upcoming AP Calc test. You can find more videos from me, more sample AP Calc questions, and my complete AP Calc study guide over at my website, apcalcprep.com. Have a great one.